Dr. Germain, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You are a medical director for our LVAD program and for the Center for Advanced Cardiac Therapeutics, which really are involved with treating people with advanced heart failure. Correct. A little bit about what some of the symptoms are associated with that for the viewers at home. Absolutely. I think that's such an important question to ask because in this day and age, people have a lot of medical problems that right. we see, and sometimes they minimize what their symptoms might be. And heart failure symptoms can be going on for quite some time before the diagnosis is actually made. So some of the symptoms that we tell patients to look out for would be shortness of breath when they right. do things trouble laying down when right. they try to go to sleep at night, right. coughing for unclear reasons, low energy, a lot of fatigue, feeling like they don't feel normal in their own bodies. Right. These are all the symptoms that we start to see. And a lot of times they can be overlapped with other symptoms like if they have emphysema or they have a virus or they have a bacterial infection or pneumonia. And oftentimes you have to evaluate those symptoms sooner to make sure it's not something more serious. So it's really complex. I mean, there could be, those are some pretty general symptoms that people Correct. have. So figuring out what's the cause, very important. And that's where you come in specifically related to the etiology of heart failure, meaning the symptoms are caused from a problem with functioning in the heart. That's right. So heart failure is really defined as a problem between the mismatch between supply and demand of the heart itself and the rest of the body. That's the definition of heart failure. How about, you know, medically? What are some of the newer treatments available for patients? So this is a super exciting time for mm -hmm. heart failure right now because right. we have a lot of advances in medical therapy and device technology. And this is really the first time I can say in 10 years that device technology might be superseding medical therapy. Wow. So right now we've had two new drugs that have come mm -hmm. out for heart failure in the past five years. We've had a number of devices, two specifically approved by the FDA this year. In 2013, Cardiomems was approved by the FDA, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Most recently, something called Barostim was approved mm -hmm. for a neuromodulation of heart failure and something called the Smart Optimizer System, which is also used for patients who are those non-responders to CRT or, or cardiac resynchronization therapy. So this right. is a really exciting time. Right, so a whole host of things available for people. You mentioned Cardiomems. Let's talk about Cardiomems because sure. that's pretty exciting. Yes, it is. So Cardiomems is something that's very personal to me because we have a lot of experience here at St. Francis in Cardiomems. Mm -hmm. So we've been planting the device really since the infancy of FDA approval in 2014. Mm -hmm. When I came here in 2016, I took over the Cardiomems program. Mm -hmm. I've implanted up to this point over 120 patients myself with the wow. device here. And we follow all those patients. And this is really specifically for patients who are at New York Heart Association Class 3, right. irrespective of ejection fraction. So it can have heart failure with preserved ejection fraction mm -hmm. or heart failure with reduced ejection mm -hmm. fraction, mm -hmm. who are having signs and symptoms and being admitted for heart failure at least one time in the past year. And this is an exciting monitor because it's able to keep patients out of the hospital, keep them with a better quality of life, and keep them alive longer with less symptoms. So really it's something we recommend for any patient who's been admitted to the hospital at least once in the past year who has class three symptoms, which means that they have signs and symptoms with activities of daily life. So something really important, you know, because I'm an ED doc and many times I would see patients, they come in and it, they're already in a volume overload state, right? Absolutely. So maybe unpack a little bit in, in layman's terms how the device works. It monitors sure. some of the pressure so that you can kind of figure out if someone is going to go into failure ahead of time That's right. and intervene on it and stop it, right? Correct. It's proactive, not right. reactive. Right. So the idea behind that is that it's a capacitor, so uh -huh. as long as blood is rowing through it, you're going to see a nice pressure waveform. Mm -hmm. And that pressure waveform translates to a pulmonary artery pressure, a systolic, diastolic, and mean. Mm -hmm. We get a tracing of that every single day on a website. The upload is automatically sent to us by the patient laying on a pillow for 18 seconds in the morning. And that's more accurate than a weight or sh showing us that their legs are swollen right. or their abdomen is swollen or coming to the ED with right. shortness of breath. Right. Because once we see those pressures start to rise in a trend formation, we know that we need to act. And right. the way we act is we call them, we tell them to adjust antihypertensives or diuretics in order to proactively treat those symptoms from preventing them from coming on. Oh, it's amazing. I, I wish we had this, you know, 10 years ago in, in the ED. We would have saved a lot of people from having to be admitted and they'd be home Correct. with their families and feeling better. Because we're talking about a 37% relative risk reduction in CHF admissions. It's amazing. Really amazing. So you mentioned all of the devices and probably one of the most exciting things and you are the medical director for our LVAD program or left ventricular assist device. Let's unpack that a little bit. Talk a little bit sure. more about the LVAD program and you actually help qualify patients if they need a heart transplant as Correct. well. So pretty serious stuff. 
very serious. So yeah. when people come to my office, they don't have that warm and fuzzy uh, feeling because it's heart failure. It already right. has a negative connotation to the right. term, unfortunately. Right. But we try to make this as unscary a process as possible by keeping patients well informed of the process. So. At St. Francis, we're called a destination LVAD program. What that means is that you can't get a transplant at our institution. We've partnered with Montefiore Medical Center to allow a seamless transition for these sick patients to go on for cardiac transplantation. The way that looks at is the class four, stage D, the sickest of the sick patients, right. will come to the office for evaluation, often for both, as the evaluation process is very similar. Once they're deemed a candidate for transplantation, they may have their surgery here. And then on a Friday, they're given a, a day at Montefiore Medical Center where they're evaluated for transplantation. We try to make that process as seamless and quick and painless as possible because these are sick people and to travel is very difficult for them. So we've made it so they see all the providers in one day up there. And patients are managed here until the time of their transplantation. And oftentimes after a year, they're able to come back and be managed here again after their transplant. And we try to keep that continuity for the patient as they have a relationship with us. And you've helped so many patients. In fact, you know, we're here in your office taping. As I walked in, one of your patients walked in and he did have a smile on his face and he had a device. So he did. Doing he's an great. He's an LVAD. Correct. So he's doing amazing. Over two years on an LVAD and uh, doing amazing. amazing. So, I mean, without that, he, he may not even be here. I mean, you bridged him and get him to the point here. where he would qualify for transplantation because we know. Um, organ transplantation, organ donation rates in New York State are very, very low. That's correct. And hard to come by. That's so. correct. And we've changed the allocation system last October, so it is a little bit different. But it's a very important point that uh, LVADs have really become the wave of the future right. because it's something that we can take off the shelf. There's not a timeline to wait. And it's a very, very good device with very good mortality benefit. How does it make you feel to have such an impact on patients' lives in this area? I mean, it really is kind of amazing. When you see people who are in the ICU mm -hmm. on the brink of death and mm -hmm. then come back to your office and see you mm -hmm. and they're doing so well and they're back out and they're working and they're enjoying their families and they're going on vacation, it really makes you feel like you're making a difference. Well, you're making a huge difference. I can't thank you enough for the amazing work you do for our patients every day. Thank you thank for you. the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Jermaine.